Welcome everyone to our, our pinning ceremony for our graduates of 2022. My name's Kim, I'm gonna be your moderator this evening. Um, just a couple quick reminders, if you could please turn your cell phones on to vibrate or silence so we don't have any ringing cell phones during the ceremony, that would be much appreciated. Um, first, I'd like to introduce our Dean of Nursing, who'd like to give some opening remarks, Dean Moon. Good evening. My name is Lori Moon, and I have the privilege to serve here as the Dean of Nursing at BCC. I would like to welcome everyone to our pinning ceremony for this wonderful class of associate degree nurses. I'd like to welcome President Kennedy, President Cabinet members, BCC faculty and staff, community members, families, friends, and of course, our graduates who are, we're honoring this evening. A special thanks to you and the audience who supported these graduates through this program. There were probably meals that you cooked and childcare that you did and babysitting that you did and all kinds of things to kind of pick up the slack so these guys could really focus on their program. And we certainly thank you for that and applaud you for that. So my question for you guys, did you ever think this day would come? No. <laughs> Do you remember your first semester here? Yes. Classes in four different areas of the cafeteria? Ever-changing sound systems? Socially distanced? Masked? Wiping down your areas when you came in and when you left? Venturing into the unknown of, pa of a pandemic that we've never witnessed before? This cohort was mighty in number and mighty in personality. <laughs> Downright scary at times. <laughs> During your time here at BCC, we've all experienced life circumstances that have changed us, experiences that have affected us individually and collectively. We all have a unique story. There have been events in the past two years that have separated us and others that have bonded us. Sickness, quarantine, a battle with cancer, surgery, hospitalizations, the birth of a baby, personal losses, financial battles, homeschooled kids, and certainly we all share in the loss of the death of Eric Engel, one of your classmates, and a friend to all. Bonds were formed out of tragedy forever in our memories. I know the view from my office will never be the same. We would be remiss in welcoming our honored guest, Eric's family, John and Donna Engel, and his girlfriend, Jessica. Thank you for being here this afternoon. I'm sure this is a very emotional time for all of you. And we really thank you for being here to celebrate with us. And even though Eric is not here physically, his class has placed a chair on the stage because he surely is here in spirit and in memory. Through many ups and downs, your class has remained supportive of each other, faithful to your studies, dedicated to your pursuit of nursing excellence, and very well fed. Your faculty has worked hard on your behalf. They are a dedicated um, faculty to nursing education, determined to see each and every one of you succeed, and have displayed the kind of empathy and professionalism to you that models what it is to be a nurse of excellence. A shout out to our faculty, both full-time and our clinical adjuncts. And if you have taught this year with this great group of students, please stand. Thank you. The nursing division couldn't function without our support staff, Tamara McCandless, Sandra West, and of course our nursing data analyst, Colleen Hunkler, who keeps us regulated, literally, 
and our team of tutors led by Julia Gallagher. I'm grateful to work with such a talented, hardworking group of um, nurses. You're enter entering a field of nursing after two years of uncertainty, with many nurses who have left the profession, and many who have changed their mind about even entering the healthcare profession. The effects of this pandemic will be long-lasting. Many people lost loved ones without saying goodbye. Our kids were isolated from school and friends and sports. Our elderly folks were isolated from their families. People lost jobs, businesses, life savings. How do you enter the medical field at a time when morale is poor, healthcare workers are really tired, and negativity is prevalent? You're, tonight, you're beginning to write your story as a new nurse. Do you follow the current trend, or do you stand up and be the change needed? Do you enter this field with the same determination and optimism that you each displayed in this program, always striving to do better? Even when you got that 96 on the exam, it wasn't good enough, remember? It only takes one person, one positive attitude to make a change. So like each one of you on this stage, every patient that you take care of will have a story. Patients are more than their age, their diagnosis, or their medical problem. Our elderly patients are not just old folks, folks that we talk at or call honey or sweetie, and hopefully none of you will ever do that. They have a whole lifetime of stories and memories. As a hospice nurse for many years, my favorite visits were when families pulled out those photo albums and told me about their loved one's story. They were desperate for me to know their loved one, not just the shell of the person who was on their final journey or who had just died, but really to know them. When does someone's story no longer matter? When do we stop seeing people? When they're old? When they're struggling with addiction? Or are homeless? Or in mental anguish? Or fill in the blank? When do we stop deserving to be treated individually and respectfully? I hope never. That drug addict in room 203 has a name and a story, right? So what's your story? How will your story unfold in your nursing practice? How will you care for the person that reminds you of a loss or triggers a painful memory? How will you honor those things that define you? How will you care for the alcoholic that reminds you of your childhood? How will you talk to the teenager that doesn't want to live any longer? How will you comfort the elderly woman who's scared to be alone how do you console the parent who just lost a child? Nurses are so important. You have the opportunity to make such a difference every single day. Don't take that lightly. Don't forget why you became a nurse. It's a privilege. I hope you see it that way. So how about your story? You're all unique individuals. Some of you are really unique. <laughs> how will being a nurse affect you? When will you stop caring? During one of my last rounding sessions at BMC, I was talking with Professor Albano. She has no clue I'm saying this, by the way. She stated that it had been an emotional semester on the oncology floor and that she found herself crying on several occasions. And I stopped and I thought, that's the nurse that I want taking care of my family and me someday. Don't lose that. Don't lose that empathy. Don't lose that feeling for the people that you are privileged to take care of. And if you start to, remember the feeling that you have right now, this moment the energy that you feel as being new nurses, and go with that, go back to that. I promise you'll find great job satisfaction in nursing if you focus on people that you're privileged to care for. Begin every shift intentionally and end every shift reflectively. So, we share in this evening of celebration, I want to say congratulations. I want to thank you for being such a dynamic group of students who literally scared me to death your first semester. <laughs> I want to thank you for always striving to do better. Thank you for being respectful and professional. And without a doubt, we know that this class will continue to make us proud. So congratulations. Thank you, Dean Moon. I would now like to introduce our college president, Ellen Kennedy. And she would like to say a few words. You're welcome. Good evening. Those were incredibly powerful words, Larry Moon. Thank you so much for sharing them with all of us who care about all of you. And I hope those messages stay with you for the rest of your careers. 
Uh, I also want to say that this is the largest crowd that we have had in this space and probably on our campus since pre-pandemic and it just seems so appropriate that it is for the pinning of our nursing students. So again, congratulations to all of you. Good evening. I am honored to be welcoming you to Boland Theater in celebration of this class who have worked with focus, diligence, commitment, and kindness. I will begin a bit off topic. You may have noticed the campus was looking a bit ragged. Uh, we are participating in No Mow May, meaning where no lawnmowers are touching our lawns or any of our areas uh, to support the pollinators, the bees that improve all of our surroundings. Um, we really struggled with the campus not being at its very best for special moments such as this. At our core, we have embraced sustainability and believed our commitment to this philosophy must be practiced every chance we have. We are doing our part for Berkshire County, and now you can say you participated in No Mo May too. And with that, welcome and thank you to family and friends who have also sacrificed and worked hard to make this moment possible. Thank you to our talented faculty who fully commit to your education every day. Thank you, Dean Laurie Moon, who tirelessly pursues improvement and is committed to ensuring a top-notch education for every student. She has ensured that you have faculty, labs, materials, and clinical sites so that you are well prepared for this next step. A special thank you to Tamara McCandless, Sandra West, and Colleen Hunkler, who attend to the details that you aren't even always aware of, and that's a good thing. I have been connected to this class from almost your arrival on campus. Your embrace of your chosen profession happened in a period of great disruption, and rolling in the early days of a pandemic, we didn't quite understand attending your classes in the cafeteria and adjacent spaces to ensure we met state and CDC requirements to keep you safe. You experienced loss and the pain and confusion that brings in your first semester, and later you welcomed a new life, an honorary member of the class, so to speak, as the program moved toward completion. No matter what you wrestled with, you opted to stay together, supporting each other and those impacted. You showed compassion and steely determination. We are proud to see you celebrating this pinning, and we regret that Eric isn't with us tonight, but we know that he is here in spirit. This transition from a student studying nursing to registered nurse once you complete the NCLEX marks a moment of change and transformation. Not only are you transforming into a professional, you will be the go-to person in your family, your neighborhood, with your friends and relatives. You'll be an accessible avenue to understand how someone should respond to a symptom, a pain, a rash. While you won't practice medicine inappropriately, there will be ways for you to provide support and encouragement for someone to seek care. You will be held in high esteem and respected for what you have and will learn. For your education doesn't end with this final semester. In some ways, it's just beginning. You will also be ambassadors for Berkshire Community College and this program. We have relied on your honesty and your candid feedback to strengthen the program and will continue to ask you for that. We hope that you will mentor others and encourage people interested in the field to explore our program. I finish my remarks with a poem by Matthew Brinton, a student at the college. This was published in this year's zine, Berkshire Community College's literary journal. I share it with Matthew's permission. He entitled it, Into More. To prosper, what must I do? Without a timid step, to surge into something new, or flower into certain fate unfolding? Watching, waiting, believing, praying. Not surging up the stairs in aggression, but ascending them one by one. My hand clasping the unchanging as I bud into who I am, who I will be, the two paradoxically consonant. Congratulations. Thank you, President Kennedy. Okay, at this time I'd like to welcome our graduate nursing student, Wendy Coombson, to come to the podium. Thank you, Wendy. This is yours. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. 
This evening, I have the pleasure and the honor to introduce an amazing nurse, Susan Galzillo, as our keynote speaker. Susan has worked as a registered nurse at Berkshire Medical Center for over 35 years after starting her nursing career in Western New York. She has held a variety of positions at Berkshire Medical Center, starting as a staff nurse and progressing up to her current position as Senior Director of Nursing for Specialties. She has held leadership roles in IV therapy, medical surgical, pharmacy, critical care, and oncology, where she, mostly, where she most recently served as Administrator Director of BMC's Cancer Center, a collaborative member of Dana-Farber Cancer Center. She holds a master's degree in nursing from Elms, Elm, um, who, Nurse Elms College and is nationally certified in IV therapy. Please help welcome me, welcome with me, Miss um, Susan Gazillo. Good evening. Thank you, Wendy, for that wonderful introduction, and I am definitely humbled and appreciative to be here. Good evenings and greetings to President Kennedy, Dean Moon, faculty, community members, families, and friends of our graduates, and, of course, the class of 2022, the nursing class um, that I'm here to help with pinning tonight. So, thank you. In some ways, it seems like light years since it's my own pinning ceremony 39 years ago, but I started when I was 12, so. <laughs> um, but other ways, it feels like just yesterday. As we know, nursing is forever changing, but it's still based in tradition and history and why we're here tonight. So the best way I can think of tonight to highlight the nurse's journey for you and for them is to use a, a communication tool that most of our nurses will truly understand. And I have chosen to address you tonight in true SBAR format. <laughs> so our SBAR communication tool stands for S for situation, B for some background, a for the assessment, of course we know we have to do, and R for my recommendations. So I'll start with the situation. I will share with you a quote by Edwin Lewis Cole, that you don't drown by falling in the water, you drown by staying there. You are each other's life preserver, so hang on tight, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. So we sit here in May of 2022, two years and two months after our first COVID patient was diagnosed at Berkshire Medical Center and the beginning of the global pandemic that has drastically changed the lives and relationships of Americans and people across the world. Better known as the life quake, this pandemic has affected all of us. We are all familiar with the sights of nurses working long hours in N95 masks, goggles, head covering, and gowns to care for the most vulnerable of patients. Where they would undress when they got home in the garage and bag their clothes as to not bring COVID into their homes. These were such scary times and unprecedented. We have watched the heartbreak for countless number of patients passing away without their families by their side, unable to say goodbye. But they have passed, they may have passed without their families, but many did not die alone because a nurse was there holding their hands and often calling family members on the phone or an iPad so that they could see them and say goodbye. That is a nurse. It is a nurse who feels their tears running down their cheer, cheek unable to wipe it away because they have a mask on and can't get through their PPE, for risking their lives as frontline staff in this COVID world is truly heroic. There is no wonder why, for 20 years in a row, the Gallup survey has identified nursing as the most trusted profession. As COVID continues to take its toll on nursing personally at home, professionally at work, our resolve has been tested. 
the worst of combinations being with shortage of nurses, increase in patient volume and acuity, a tired workforce, and a supply chain that is unreliable and has stressed the healthcare system. However, nurses are not only the most trusted profession, but they're the most admired. It is a profession to be proud of, to be a part of, our knowledge, skills, research, education, and advocacy have given us a voice like never before to not only continue advocating for our patients, but to advocate for ourselves, our profession, and stand stronger today. You as new graduates are the future of nursing and have the power to do that today. Some of this power you have, have has been given to you by the hard work of nurses that went before you, but much of the power you have will be because of who you are. The new generation of nurses where information is at your fingertips <laughs> and instantaneous when you learn to question when things don't feel right, where you have stood up and had a voice. I challenge you to never lose your voice in fighting for those that cannot fight for themselves. Never lose your voice to stand up and be heard when you see discrimination, unfairness, and violence happening. If you see something, say something. Be the role model that you want others to see you as. Be the beacon of hope, tolerance, and kindness. So that's our situation. Here's our background. And one thing that we'll know about nursing is, first of all, you will we'll never change in nursing, even in this pandemic, is our unusual sense of humor. I mean, nurses can find humor in anything, like bodily fluids, putrid smells, something that you're eating for dinner that reminds you of something at work, or a unique medical equipment. Um, last week, during National Nurses Week at BMC, nurses were challenged to do a reinvention convention where they had to choose a piece of medical equipment to find a new pur purpose and market it. Kind of like a nurse's shark tank. So the IV nurses reinvented the glass bottles that IVIG comes in and they marketed that as hummingbird feeders because we can find things like that. The, the clinical educator utilized the Purewick catheter with a wound vac and suction tubing to create the wizard, which would help nurses during long shifts so that they didn't have to go to the restroom so frequently. <laughs> I would use that at night. Um, or toilet paper that's simply used as a vase for some flowers, because we have to be also little MacGyvers in nursing, or tourniquets as slingshots. So all nurses' sense of humor. Three words that most people want to hear every day in their life is, I love you. The three nurses, words that nurses want to hear every day is alert, oriented, and ambulatory. <laughs> When 2020 was designated as the year of the nurse, it was not how we want, had that in mind. But also remember background in the days of Florence Nightingale that nurses first started to be seen as heroes with the care and support of soldiers and establishing the sterile environment and attending to care and treatments. Some things haven't changed. Today, nurses are superheroes without the cape. So now for the assessment. So my assessment for this situation and background are that nurses are rooted in strength. This year's AACN, the American Association of Critical Care Nurses theme for Nurses Day is right on target. Nurses are rooted in strength. That is what defines us. Our resolve has been tested. Our bodies are weary. Our minds are tired, our hearts are saddened, and our passion is dulled. But our sense of being and our calling is rooted in strength. And we will be stronger than ever. Challenges ahead are real. COVID variants, short staffing, sicker patients. But we will find a new path and learn to thrive in our post-traumatic growth. To pause and reflect and to heal to find inner strength to carry us forward. Our roots are in our community, in our families, and on our calling to be a nurse. 
We will lift our profession and make positive moments to encourage our youth and others to choose nursing as a profession. Empower the staff that are currently there to stay and weather the storm and to work with each other to build relationships for support. They say that diamonds are formed under intense pressure, and much like a diamond in the rough, nurses came out strong and beautiful under the intense pressure of the pandemic and nationwide civil unrest. So also know this, that your class will have job opportunities above, available to them like no other class. Hospitals, long-term care, MD practices, schools, and many others are all looking for nurses. You are fortunate to be able to have some choices with what you want to do. And in addition, nurses' salaries and benefits have grown significantly over the past two years. And you will make now more starting than many nurses made after seven, several years in the workforce. So your timing couldn't be better with the supply and demand in your favor. So now let's go to recommendations. So first I'll start with all of you family, friends who joined us tonight. So my recommendation to you is be prepared. You are going to hear things you've never heard before. Not patient names, not patient identifications, you will never hear that, but be prepared for some days that you are not going to be able to shut them up. You will have millions of acronyms that sound like a foreign language. So she was NPO for an ORIF and is going to the OR and then to PACU and then will need IV piggybacks TID to prevent caudy, clapsy, and VAC, VAPS and she will be on the SEBA scale and then have BiPAP and DC to a sniff. <laughs> what? <laughs> and sometimes it's just that they don't want to talk about it and they just want to be alone and they just want to be quiet. So don't take offense. We deal with a lot during the day and our, our night and evening shifts. You will hear an excitement over their first Foley catheter inserted on the first attempt or the first lab draw they got when no one else could. Yes. You will hear laughter over family and patients sharing stories. You will hear anger over not being able to get it all done. And yes, you will see tears over patients who have passed on their shift who they really connected with and reminded them of their grandpa. We are so such a small community that we will be taking care of our families, our former teachers, our coaches, babysitters. They can never get away. They'll be approached in the supermarket, in the, person, in the line with somebody that recognizes them from the hospital, and that person will lift up their shirt and show them their rash and want some advice and what to put on it and if should they call their doctor. So that'll be prepared. Or the soccer game when someone's yelling at them because they were in the ER the night before and they waited way too long. So you'll take the brunt of, of that as well. But you will also get a hug in Walmart when someone recognizes you and embraces you to thank you for the care of their sick child or their elderly parent. My point is, is that there are highs are highs and the lows are lows. And sometimes they come all in the same shift. So be prepared to listen, to comfort, to laugh, and to wipe their tears. Understand that dinner tonight is going to be a bowl of Captain Crunch, and that laundry will hopefully fold itself. Understand that sometimes soccer games and school plays will be missed, and Christmas presents will be opened later in the day because it's their weekend to work or their holiday to work. Understand that all these sacrifices they make for themselves is because they are a nurse caring for those that can't care for themselves. So for the nursing graduates, my recommendations is, first of all, know that your nursing managers are always there for you. So make sure that you contact them if you need anything. I have to put that little plug in because the nursing managers would want me to do that. So. So always remember today, stay a little, say, stay excited, but a little scared, because scared will be good, and you probably will be like, why does she have to tell me that? I'm petrified, but um, I will tell you that my first days in the ICU, I was a new nurse, and I was going in to start an IV on a patient, and of the very senior nurse 
patient and I was doing that and I got a little blood on her bed and she's, you know, if you don't know anything about nurses, we're kind of particular how things go and she knows if there's blood on the bed, she would have to change the bed. So I was petrified. So I literally changed that entire bed in ICU on a vented patient with all the tubes and drains and everything by myself with the curtain closed quickly so that when she came in, there was no blood on her bed and that we would not, you know, I wouldn't be like mortified and then she would look at me and then I would have to leave and you know it would be, it would have been bad scenes so always remember today um, and remember that the only thing you own is your reputation so as Dean Moon said is what is your story so when you come into work and you're at the change of shift and they go oh so and so's on tonight it's gonna be a great night there's nothing that we can't handle with Mary not on or John not on. So remember that you do own your story and you do own your reputation. So be that person that everybody goes, oh, I hope I'm on when he or she or they are on because we're going to have a great night. So own your story. Always be humble and kind. You can always learn of course from doctors and lots of other people, but you can learn from the nursing assistants, you can learn from the unit coordinators, from the dietary aid and other students. So remember how you feel today and remember to embrace that as you are now on the other side of that. Never stop learning. Journals, certification, podcasts, however it is that you learn, embrace that and never stop. I learn every day. I learn mostly from you. Never stop learning because knowledge is power and it's meant to be shared. Treat patients as the person that, they, as, as um, Dean Moon said, at the, as the patient with the story, not the disease. They're not the gallbladder in 14 or, or the substance use disorder patient on, in the ER cube. They're a patient with a story. And how often we learn that when you pick up the paper and you're reading the obituary and you go, I had no idea that that patient was the CEO of this or that his, he had a farmland and he's the place we got all of our, you know, our vegetables from. So really get to know your patient's story. Take the time. It will be time well spent. Find a mentor, someone you can trust, someone that can, you can have on speed dial, someone that you connect with. I can't necessarily pick that for you. You'll find somebody you connect with and then never let them go. Dress code, it's my little thing. You know, come to work every day looking professional. My little motto is if you wear it to a picnic, you shouldn't wear it to work. So um, there's a time and a place for everything. I'll see you at the picnic and you'll, you, you can wear whatever you want. The load is lighter if everyone lifts. Teamwork, I can't say enough about it. And your team isn't just the people that you're with, it's the person, the physical therapist that's coming on, the dietary aid, the pharmacist, the doctor. It's a huge team. Make sure you learn from your team. Celebrate diversity. The face of nursing has changed. Um, it is far more embracing all genders, all races, sexuality, religions, and we're caring for the same kinds of diversity. So embrace it, don't judge it, be happy that you have that, that insight into that. And um, I can only say that so, so much because the patient population we have um, really needs us to be the nurse and not the judge. Stay away from the negativity. You need to use your force field. We all need that in life, right? That little, you know, beam me up Scotty or, you know, put up the force fields. We need all of that. Admit your mistakes. Um, there's not a day that I don't go home that I don't wish I had a do-over for something. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I recently took over uh, overseeing the family birthplace and so it wasn't an area that I knew very well so on the board was all the patients names and what they were here and how close they were to delivery and you know how many centimeters dilated and then there was a note that said broken pipes so I was like okay so that must be the new turn like somebody broke their water right and I said so what is broken pipes my question is they're like 
No, it's broken pipes, really. In 517, the road, the, the pipes are broken. <laughs> so it was really hard to, you know, command respect when I thought broken pipes were your, your water is broken on the family birthplace. So admit your mistakes, be humble. Um, and ask for help. You know, I think at the beginning of all of this, I started with we don't drown by falling in the water, we drown by staying. So you have to ask for help. Ask for a hand, ask a question. Go get someone if you don't know something. Definitely ask for help. And the best thing you can do and, and the takeaway from today is you have to find some self-care. Whatever that is for you, my self-care is gonna be different than yours. Is it a walk? Is it yoga? Is it go for a, you know, a, go shopping? That's mine. Um, uh, is it sleep? Is it take your child to the playground? Is it meditation? Whatever it is, you have to find it. These jobs are just too hard to do it without taking care of yourself. If you don't take your care of yourself, you can't take care of others. So I hope that you find that, that um, it, what brings you joy at work and what brings you peace. So be the beacon for all that you do. I wish you the very best in life and in your career, and I hope that your career is at BMC, so if you want a job, you just see me afterwards. I had to say that too, or Brenda would have been mad at me. Um, and be resilient, be kind to yourself, be kind to each other, be the future of nursing that we are proud of, and remember you are rooted in strength. So I leave you with this quote from Maya Angelou. As a nurse, we have the opportunity to heal the mind, soul, heart, and body of our patients, their families, and ourselves. They may forget your name, but they will never forget how you make them feel. So thank you, good luck, and congratulations. Thank you so much, Sue. Such great points. Okay, I'd like to re-invite Dean Moon to the stage. She's gonna be presenting awards to our graduates. Okay, so we have a a few um, awards that I'd like to present to students this evening. Um, this was really difficult because there's so many um, deserving students in this cohort. Um, it made it nearly impossible to pick recipients. Um, we'd like to give everyone a reward. Unfortunately, that's not possible. The first award I'm going to give is the Berkshire Health System Spirit of Caring Award. The Berkshire Health System Spirit of Caring Award is given to a graduating associate degree nurse who best exemplifies the spirit of compassion. The recipient of this award is committed to clinical and service excellence, optimizes each patient interaction to its full potential, and shows caring and concern for patients and their families. This scholarship is funded by Berkshire Health Systems. We are so pleased to present this award to Mickey Lennon. The next award is the Betty Everson Memorial Nursing Award. This award is awarded to a graduating associate degree nursing student who best exemplifies the personal characteristics of commitment, perseverance, and pers professional growth. We are proud to present this award to Wendy Coomson. Thank you so much. Congratulations. This next award is very special. The Eric en Engel uh, Memorial Nursing Scholarship. This is awarded to a non-traditional nursing student with financial need. Eric, a non-traditional student himself, was a registered EMT studying in the nursing program here at BCC and worked in the school's digital commons. Eric left this world after a long struggle with substance abuse, um, substance use disorder, but not before achieving many of his personal and professional goals. 
This scholarship has been funded through the vision and generosity of Eric's parents, John and Donna Engel, as well as many family and friends who knew Eric and his love for the medical field. The faculty and I are pleased to present this award to Alyssa Dunham. We have two more um, awards. These awards come directly from the nursing um, division. Um, the faculty have awarded two that they present to students um, each year. The first is the Spirit of Nursing Award. This award is presented to a student that seamlessly blends both the art and science of nursing through providing compassionate, evidence-based care to all those in need. This year, the faculty has chosen James Fuller as the recipient of this award. The last award is the Academic Achievement Award. It's presented to a graduating student who shows exemplary academic success in the classroom and clinical environment. This year's recipient of the Academic Achievement Award goes to Kristen Burke. So congratulations to all of you. Remember, there are many more awards on awards night on June 2nd, so please make sure you're there, um, and congratulations. This time I'd like to introduce graduate student, SNO President, Alyssa Dunham, who will lead the class in the Nightingale Pledge. Before I start, I just wanted to say thank you very much to Eric's parents for the award. Thank you very much. All right, you guys ready to stand? I pledge in the presence of this assembly that I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standards of nursing, that I will not knowingly administer any harmful drugs, I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge in the practice of my calling. I will work as an equal member of the healthcare team for the benefit and welfare of those committed to my care. The graduates also want to um, wish um, a thank you to Paul and Stan Walzik for their generous gift of the nursing pins to the class of 2022. Um, they were not able to make it tonight, but we wanted to um, extend our gratitude to them. We will wear our pins proudly and think fondly of this night and our benefactors. And now just a brief history of the nursing pin. The wearing of the school pin symbolizes the right to serve others. It signifies the acceptance of the responsibilities of the practice of nursing and the educational preparation of the wearer. Most schools have a pinning ceremony to honor graduates. The culmination of the student's hard work is expressed in the pinning ceremony. It is a time-honored nursing school tradition dating back before the turn of the 20th century. Traditionally, nursing students have conducted an honors or pinning ceremony to mark the passage of student nurse role to practice role. It is an emotional event that is shared with family, friends, faculty, and others important to the student's education. The first associate degree nursing students entered BCC in 1967 and graduated of June of 69. Following the long tradition of having a pin that was significant both to the college and program, a pin was designed for these first graduates. The gold center of the pin features the college seal, including the words, to travel hopefully, 
along with a path surrounded by mountains and trees. The words Berkshire Community College Nursing form the outer circle in royal blue and green, which are also the school's colors. The same design is used for our present graduates who wear the pin with pride. Thank you. I would now like to introduce our assistant professor and ADN chair, Mary Rose Williams. So some students chose to be pinned by family and friends that are registered nurses. The remaining students will be pinned by faculty. And I would like to introduce Professor Jennifer Wilzak, who will be helping to um, announce the names. I would also like to have... I'd also like to have Assistant Professor Sarah Broll, Kelly Albozik, Chris Kiernan, and Jillian Albano um, to help pin the students. Can the first row please stand up? Barbara Addy Okran. <laughs> Caleb Appleton. Emily Bueno. Cassidy Brewer. Irma Brulard. Kristen Burke. Brittany K. 
Condon. Heather Corcoran. Cassidy Crawford. Lindsay Curry. Emily Deming. Alina Di Nicola. Row one, row one, you can sit down. <laughs> row two, you may stand. <laughs> Alyssa Dunham. Stacy Ellery. George Fiaggio. James Fuller. Caitlin Furlan. Aaron Gleason. Hannah Gold.
Sarah Goodrich. Brianna Graham. <laughs> Shamika Hackman. Caitlin Hufton. <laughs> Brittany Isabel. <laughs> Megan Jones. Row two may be seated. Row three, please stand up. Brittany Curver. <laughs> it rhymes with take care of that. <laughs> Wendy Coomson. <laughs> Diana Leibinger. <laughs> Mickey Lennon. Amber LeSher. <laughs> Heather.
Heather Marsh. Bridget McCarthy. <laughs> Samantha Miller. Catherine Morton. <laughs> Mary Blessing Notum. Teresa Qualiano. <laughs> Genevieve Quetty. Row three, please be seated. <laughs> Row four, please stand. <laughs> Natalia Riva. Kylie Ruane. Ronald Sage.
Xiomara Serrano Guzman. Megan Sheridan. Whitney Spengel. Simpson. <laughs> Deborah Stokes. Jacqueline Tessier. <laughs> Amanda Wasp. Melissa Williams. Craig Williams. <laughs> Jessica Zerbato. Row four can sit down. I'd like to invite Assistant Professor Sarah Broll to the stand to read the blessing of the hands.
Good evening. Um, the individual who originally was going to read the blessing was unable to make it tonight, so I have the honor of reading this blessing to the students. So this is a prayer for the blessing of hands. Bless these hands that touch life and death. Bless these hands that hold pain and ease it. Bless these hands that bring meals and clean rooms. Bless these hands that hold the phone and touch the keyboard. Bless these hands that wash, comfort, calm, and heal. Bless these hands that support patients, their families, and each other. Bless these hands that sometimes grow weary. Bless these hands with hope and strength. And may these hands know the love they have offered to others. Thank you so much, Sarah. Our student curriculum representative, Mickey Lennon, would now like to give some closing remarks. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mickey Lennon, and I am one of the curriculum reps for this ADN class of 2022. I must have sat down to write this 10 times without any luck. It is only now, after completion of our coursework, that I am able to find the words. I guess sometimes you have to reach the end of the road in order to be able to reflect on it. So we go back to September 2020, still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic pre-vaccine without any end in sight. We arrive to an empty campus amidst tumbleweeds blowing around and signs indicating common animals and objects as six foot social distancing points of reference, we walked into the cafeteria or the alcove or G12. That's right, at this point, all 50 something of us still couldn't even be in the same room together. I'm sure you can all relate to the feeling of uncertainty of what stood before us from sanitizing our own tables before and after class, using microphones to ask questions so the other classrooms could hear, wearing goggles in lab, and for some of us, being COVID tested twice weekly at clinical, I think we will forever be the class of nursing students who didn't consistently see the bottom half of our classmates' faces until two months before graduation. <laughs> Every single individual sitting here behind me worked very hard and persevered in order to make it onto this stage. Many of us have been at this for four years or more, starting with taking our required prerequisite courses. Many of us waited patiently for an extra year to start the program. Many of us balanced work and kids and personal responsibilities. Many of us lost important people that we wish were here tonight to celebrate with us. All of these facets of life happened, all while we tried to study and learn and prepare to be safe and capable nurses. All while trying to find a moment of silence to memorize common side effects of antihypertensive meds, the proper eardrop administration method for children. You pull the pinna down and back. <laughs> asking ourselves, what is a fundus? <laughs> and finding very creative mnemonics that wouldn't get lost amongst the rest of our knowledge while taking an exam. It was uncertain, but we did it. It was tiring, but we did it. And it was hard, but we did it. It sometimes felt like this day would never come, yet here we are. Today we are pinned and formally welcomed into the group of nurses who came before us. I think I speak for everyone up here when I say, to the faculty that educated us in both knowledge and skill, we thank you. To the clinical instructors that cultivated a safe learning environment and allowed us to make mistakes, we thank you. To the staff who worked behind the scenes doing the hard work to keep our program running smoothly, we thank you. 
and to Dean Moon, who tirelessly advocated on our behalf, welcomed our opinions, and prioritized our success, we thank you. To our family and friends who helped us through these last two years, mostly by leaving us alone to study, we thank you. And to my fellow classmates who helped us memorize lab values, helped us reposition and ambulate our patients at clinical, helped us learn how to draw blood or take a blood pressure, a complete a physical assessment in lab, we thank you. But mostly, to this cohort of nursing students who worked so hard to lift each other up encouraged us to keep going and kept us laughing. Thank you. I stand before you today as we move into a new chapter where we are no longer classmates, but now colleagues. Congratulations, my fellow nurses. I think the best part of that is, you did it! <laughs> okay, so, you guys stand. <laughs> the students are gonna exit through the back. Once they have exited the auditorium, then everyone else can exit after. Okay, if everyone can stand. Thank you for all coming and celebrating this pinning ceremony with us. And let's give a round of applause. The class of 2022.